it's Carolyn Stern and welcome to Carolyn Talks, the show to watch if you want to get unstuck, maximize your potential and achieve more. Today I'm here with Ian. Ian just finished an EQ assessment. What's an EQ assessment? It's an online web-based assessment where you answer 133 statements on a frequency scale, going from never to rarely to almost always and always. So Ian's just received his scores. He's had a few minutes to look it over. And normally when I go over these scores with my clients, we have an hour debrief and it's confidential. But today Ian's agreed that he would talk about his scores, or at least in particular, one of his lowest scores, impulse control, and how that gets in his way. So Ian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks. So let's start with um, your impulse control. How do you think that gets you stuck? I think there's I think there's a lot of different ways. Um, you know, in in the past, um, impulse control was uh, you know a big issue for me in in terms of um, drug addiction and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we can talk about that, but it's fine. anyway, um, that's that's something that I've uh, you know I've been in recovery for 15 years, so congratulations. It, it doesn't thank you. <laughs> um, it doesn't affect that but I can see how it manifests in other, in other ways. Yeah. Um, I think impulse control. Um, Where does it get in your way in um, the most significant way? Um, okay, well, one of the areas that I can identify for sure is just in terms of um, anger. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's... Um, it seems like for me, it's almost anger can almost be like a drug, mm -hmm. and um, I seem to, yeah, like I don't have control. Like I, there's a lack okay. of control. So it's if that's an impulse, then yeah, impulse yeah. control. I can see how that um, that applies to anger for sure. So the gift that you being here today is showing our audience that. There's probably tons of viewers right now that struggle with anger management. And a good thing that they can't see your scores, but one of the things that you ranked really high in was emotional self-awareness. And having high emotional self-awareness is key because in order to change any of these competencies, you have to have the awareness, right? So you have the awareness that you can lose your impulses, control of your impulses and react. What can you do to stay committed to not reacting because the first step is awareness, which you have in that moment, I might say something that triggers you, but what can you do so that you don't react in anger? Hmm. Uh, I wish I had the answer to that. <laughs> um, I think for me, um, like to be committed to something is a very, it's a powerful concept. But um, I, I do a lot better with commitment when I'm held accountable. Okay. Um, um, I can often, um, you know, commit to myself sort of, but without committing, not telling anybody about a commitment to take an action or to you know, to either do or not do some something, right. but, um, you know, without, I don't hold myself accountable. Right. So I'll often, uh, break my word to myself. Right. right? And, um, but if I'm, if I'm held accountable to a commitment by others, mm -hmm. um, I'm much more likely to get some success in that. Yeah. And by the way, you're not alone with that. Uh, one of the reasons why places like Weight Watchers works is they make people go in every week and get weighed. And so they're accountable for their daily um, eating habits throughout the week because they have to get on that scale and, and, and show somebody the number. So you're not alone there. So how can I, as your coach, help you stay accountable? Whether that's me being an accountability partner or somebody else, what can you do to keep you accountable? Um, I think, uh, I do a lot better when I'm rewarded as opposed to punished. Cause I think, I think I have like a, you know, a fear of, you know, screwing up 
Mm. So when I do screw up, mm -hmm. um, I need I need that to be okay, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, my my tendency maybe is to sort of turtle mm. or to sort of uh, yeah to not show up. Right. If I if I screw up, I don't want people to know about it. Right. Right. Because for somehow it's it's like it's not OK. Right. It's not OK to make a mistake. Right. And based on your emotional intelligence scores, one of your other lower competencies is independence. Now, I struggle with independence myself. That's actually my lowest hmm. competency. And what that means is when you're when you have low independence, you are emotionally dependent on others. So you getting the a OK, it's OK to screw up is your hmm. independence working. Right? It's your dependence of needing somebody to tell you it's okay. As your coach, I'm telling you it is okay if you screw up. And by the way, when anybody, any of my clients, when, when I'm coaching them, you're trying to change behaviors here. And behaviors aren't easy to change. And what I give all of my clients is what I call a relapse prevention program, which is mm. when you relapse, and you will relapse because we all do, Nobody's perfect, it's not a straight line. What are you gonna do? So what could be a relapse prevention program for you? So when you screw up and you do get emotionally charged and you do get angry, what can you do to get back on track? Like a relapse prevention for me looks like just picking up where I left off and, and moving on. Okay. Not, uh, not getting caught up in you know, oh, I screwed up again and beating right. myself up, and, right. you know, taking myself out right. in that way. And it's really easy. And what I tell my clients is plan it now while you're strong. Mm -hmm. Plan your relapse prevention now while you're strong before you're in the, the muck of it, right? So for instance, when I cheat on my diet, right? Afterwards, I feel like crap. So what do I do? I go out and buy a cheesecake and eat the whole thing, <laughs> right? What you need to do is while you're strong, what can you do to not react? So you've just said you're not going to beat yourself up. Great. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to how are you going to stay committed to not reacting emotionally? Um, well, I guess for me, it's going to be um, having, uh, having a plan for starters. Okay. And I think you know, the biggest, the most important part of that plan is that I'm not doing it by myself. Okay. I'm uh, in it with you. Okay. Um, but I, I'll, I'll need to have, uh, you know, friends, family, just sort of a support group, I guess. Okay. So let's talk about the plan. What's one thing, what's the first thing you can do when someone triggers you and you're emotionally charged and you're aware that you're emotionally charged, what's one thing that you can do in that moment to stay committed to your plan of not reacting emotionally? Oh, um, like you mean if I'm, if I get angry or if I'm triggered by something, um, I, I guess the first thing is uh, just to maybe to breathe, to yeah. to try to create a little bit of space, just a gap that um, between that whatever triggers me, because right. um, you know I'm not, uh, I don't see it coming. Right. I don't see it coming. So um, you know the more. The more time I can give myself to respond as opposed to just react right away, right. Um, yeah, that would, figuring out how to do that, I think, is a, a really good first step. Okay, perfect. One tip that I give clients is if you can, look at yourself from the situation from above, almost like you're an observer of yourself. So somebody's triggered Ian down here and almost take yourself above the situation and look from above and how can you, re th that'll give you the space that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. How can you, with that space, then plan a, an appropriate response? Um, well, I think if I have the space, then 
you know, I, I am capable of making an appropriate response yeah. because, like, I think one of the uh, one of the results in there was my, um, you know, sort of reliance on others. I mm -hmm. forget, I forget independence, yeah. independence, right? So, because it's important to me what other people think of me, right? Um, you know, in this kind of situation, that that can really work in my favor because um, you know I don't. I know that when I react and I come out angry, um, like clearly other people don't approve of that behavior. Sure. So, um, you know, if I can find, make that space that I'm actually making a conscious decision mm -hmm. of how I'm acting, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, my my desire to have others view me favorably, mm -hmm. you know, I'll treat others well because I want them mm -hmm. to, to like me or I want them to approve of. Sure. And like, I, yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I, that I always tell people when they get their scores, because we're so used to, uh, wanting really high scores, high means good, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I don't, want you to think like that because there is the dark side of emotional intelligence with all of these things. So for instance, if you had a really high independent score, mm -hmm. the dark side of you can be too independent. You can be not need anybody and then you don't work well with teams. If you're married to someone that's too independent, then that woman never feels or man never feels needed in that relationship. Now you, on the other hand, have really low independence, like myself, I can relate to you. But like you said, there's the positive of having the low score sometimes because it does help you keep control of those impulses because you don't want to come across mm -hmm. in a negative way. Okay, so before we close, we've talked about a little bit about the awareness of knowing what you're doing in the moment, the opportunity to give yourself space and look from above, What's one thing that you could say, because emotional intelligence is all about not only being aware of our emotions, but being able to express them constructively. What's one thing you could say in that moment when someone triggers you in a constructive way? One thing I could say to the other person? Yes. Um, uh, one trick I've learned is to ask the person to repeat themselves or to ask them like for clarification of what they said um, because sometimes yeah I, and that just in doing that I'm not reacting right I'm actually you know I'm I'm actually diffusing myself a little bit there for it's, sure it's like I'm creating creating that gap that we were talking about. Right. So you're taking time to sort of try to cool down and let them talk so that you don't feel like you have a need to talk. Great. What's the next thing you could say, even if you're emotionally charged, after they've repeated themselves and explained what they meant? What's the next thing you could say to let someone know that either A, they've triggered you in a negative way, or B, how you're feeling, but in a constructive way. Yeah, for me, that's, that's, it's, I think I'm very internal in my feelings and I don't, I don't want to tell people how I'm feeling. Okay. Now I'm going to argue here with you here. That's not what your score says because your emotional expression score, which is constructively expressing your emotions, you're quite high in. So that means you're actually able to constructively express your emotions. Now, maybe you don't feel like you're worthy of expressing how you feel, but you are very capable based on your score of being able to constructively express your emotions. Hmm. So my question to you is, can you give yourself space to say, you know what? I am worthy. I, my feelings do count and I can share how I'm feeling in this moment. Hmm. I never thought of that. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, 
yeah, like I can say, I can tell myself I'm worthy. Um, it sounds odd to say that, but um, yeah, like I, I do get that for me, it's, it's hard to tell somebody else like how I'm feeling, especially, oh, I'm angry or I'm sad, like something that I consider mm -hmm. bad news. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I get that I don't want the other person to know that about me. Yeah. So emotional intelligence is all about, it's not about controlling your emotions and not expressing them. It's about controlling them and expressing them in a controlled and constructive way. So I can say, you know what, Ian, what you just did, I, when you did that, I felt angry. And I don't have to be angry to say it. Mm. Yeah, for me, that's, 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 it's like, if I'm angry, I want you to know I'm angry by showing you I'm angry. Right. It's like, that's, that's right. how I, right. that's how I deal with it. Okay. So can I ask as your accountability coach mm -hmm. that the next time you're triggered, you're going to one, have the awareness of it two get some space and then three constructively say how you're feeling when you did X, I feel, or I felt, or I'm feeling angry. Can, can you commit to me the next time that's done that you can try that? Oh, I can, I can certainly try. Um, yeah. yeah, that'll be, that'll be a challenge yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it sounds like something so simple, nope. but I don't, like I can't, see myself doing that yeah. but yeah but if you want to be different you've got to do different and so by trying this approach which is have the awareness get yourself out of the equation look from above and then constructively say when you did blank I felt angry mm -hmm. will help you diffuse any situation okay um, I can commit to doing that okay good um, or at least I can commit to trying to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's all I need you to do is to be willing to be willing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks so much for coming. We really, I really appreciate you being here. And now I have a question for you. What's one thing that you do to control your impulses? Leave a comment below. Sometimes the best conversations happen after the episode, so make sure you go to carolynstern.com and leave a comment now. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching Carolyn Talks and see you next time. Uh, hire people. I want to get to that next stage. And uh, it's something that I am, I feel like I'm quitting off because mm. I think I am mm. ready for it, but.